In this pod, we'll look at how Hitler became the Chancellor of the Weimar Republic in Germany. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi Party, was appointed as Chancellor of Germany. Since the Wall Street crash and the resulting Great Depression, the Nazi Party had grown to become one of the largest political parties in the Reichstag. However, it was the events between 1932 and 1933 that were fundamental to Hitler attaining chancellorship. In order to fully understand why Hitler was invited to become chancellor, it's important we revisit the Weimar Constitution. The Constitution attempted to be democratic and ensured that all votes were represented in the Reichstag. This was achieved through proportional representation, where each party is awarded seats based upon their proportion of the vote. This prevented a single party from forming government, as no one party gained the majority of seats. Coalitions, or alliances between like-minded parties, were common. The power of the president was also important. He appointed the chancellor and held the power to implement Article 48 of the Constitution. This article allowed him to rule by decree without the approval of the Reichstag during times of emergency. There were several key events between 1932 and 1933 that led to the appointment of Hitler as Chancellor. The first was Heinrich Brüning's failure as Chancellor. Brüning was confronted with the Great Depression shortly following his appointment as Chancellor in early 1930. His response was to tighten credit, cut wages and reduce government aid to the unemployed. He established a presidential government using President Paul von Heidenberg's constitutional powers, namely Article 48, to pass emergency decrees without the authority of the Reichstag. Brüning's policies were extremely unpopular, and in May 1932 he was forced to resign. Following his resignation, Hindenburg appointed Franz von Papen as Chancellor on the 2nd of June 1932. Von Papen became Chancellor with very little support from the Reichstag. Even his own party, the Centre Party, disliked him. As a result, he was unable to form a cabinet. In an attempt to gain support on the 4th of June 1932, he called a Reichstag election for July. In the July election, von Papen failed to secure support. However, the Nazi Party enjoyed great success, winning 230 seats and becoming the largest party in the Reichstag. However, they were far from a majority as there were a total of 608 seats. The Nazi party declared themselves as a people's party, and Hitler hoped to be appointed chancellor. President Hindenburg refused, only offering him the role of vice-chancellor. That wasn't enough for Hitler, and his party refused to join the Reichstag. A vote of no confidence against von Papen was passed, and another election was scheduled for November 1932. The November election saw the Nazi vote reduced to 196 seats. The leadership of the party were concerned. Goebbels wrote in his diary that the future looks dark and gloomy. Nonetheless, the Nazi party was still the largest party in the Reichstag. Concern that there would be a military coup or Nazi putsch was growing. As a response, General von Schleicher, a former army leader, demanded his appointment as chancellor. Hindenburg agreed and on the 3rd of December 1932, von Schleicher was made Chancellor. Von Schleicher was another unpopular Chancellor. By late January 1933, he was struggling to maintain a united and functional Reichstag. On the 28th of January 1933, he resigned. During Schleicher's Chancellorship, von Papen still hoped for a position of power. He privately approached Hitler, guaranteeing him support in becoming Chancellor, in exchange for a position on the cabinet. Von Papen believed that Hitler could be easily influenced and would be easily controlled. Hitler agreed to his terms, and on the 22nd of January, von Papen appealed to Hindenburg to appoint Hitler as Chancellor. President Hindenburg initially refused. However, Schleicher's resignation provided him with little other option. Following a meeting with von Papen on the 30th of January 1933, Hindenburg reluctantly agreed to appoint Hitler as Chancellor. 